just when I thought we were really gonna get some gorgeous spring weather, of course, it's another snow day. So, I may all be in Whisperland, and I'm not putting real clothes on today. I can't be bothered. We're doing sweats, top and bottom. Let's do our best and make breakfast. We are going to start out with some green onion. Normally, in the summertime, I like to grow my own green onion, but like, it's, we're too far gone for that. You've seen the outside. So, I just have store-bought onion in like a little mason jar with water to keep them as close to fresh as possible. The wind is really blowing outside, so you might hear it from time to time. Vlog. Unfortunately, it can't be helped. You know, when the cold wind blows, it chills you. It chills you to the bone. Today's breakfast is a classic Hobbit meal, which is where I open the fridge and just pull out a bunch of stuff and make whatever looks interesting to me. Just a total smattering of stuff. So we're going to start out by washing some fruits and veg, or I guess these are technically all fruits. Tomatoes are fruits, right? But you know what I mean. <laughs> we'll start out by doing the apple and getting that going with some, I think these are cherry tomatoes or something like that. I don't know. It's too early. Also doing some mushrooms. Normally I would just clean mushrooms by like only using paper towel, but these mushrooms are really dirty. So I have to give them a little run under the tap before wiping them off on paper towel. It's kind of better to just use paper towel if you can, but like at the same time, you don't want dirt in your food. So. Breakfast today, I'm going to make just a little salad on the side, just uh, admittedly more for like a pop of green. I think it's like cheerful to have colors on your plate. And I'm not really doing a dressing, just like olive oil, a little balsamic glaze, you could throw spices and stuff in there. I do black pepper, always lots and lots of black. And, you know, of course, also we'll do a little bit of lemon juice just for, like, that nice, um, tart quality. And I'm just gonna really blend that with a fork. Because I'm gonna do some, like, hot foods as a part of this breakfast. I'm gonna basically prep the majority of my ingredients beforehand just because I want it to, like, all come together at the same time so it's nice and hot and delicious and nothing that's supposed to be hot will be served cold basically. So just cutting these little white mushrooms into quarters just so that they all cook pretty evenly and I'm just gonna put these in a bowl. Most of these like veg and everything are just things that are like, I've eaten half of the box already in the fridge and I just don't want it to go bad. It pains me so much when like fruits and vegetables go bad in the fridge. I'll just eat something even if I don't want to eat it, if it's like close to going bad because I don't want it to go to waste, you know. It's worse even when it's like in the summer. And it's stuff I've actually grown because I'm like, I can't let a single one of these go to waste. That they were so hard to get into this world, you know. So we've got the tomatoes ready and the mushrooms. We'll put a little pan going on like medium heat. And I'm going to start with two pieces of bacon. The one 
cards that we rolled the other day. I just throw them right in there in the paper and we'll take it out in a couple of minutes as the bacon starts to warm up because they are like frozen solid right now. If you're wondering, I always put the plates that I'm going to be serving in on or near the stove while I'm cooking because it warms them up. Some nice ramen eggs I'm going to do this morning as well. Just taking them out a little early so they're not like super cold when they hit the plate. And the bacon is already warmed up. So we can just take this parchment paper right off and throw it away. It served its use. I don't have a ton planned some video editing I need to work on for a couple of hours, and then I'm hoping that we can go out and run some errands, but like, the weather is not good, so I'm not really counting on it. I need to pick up some stuff for getting my, like, garden started now, because this is kind of like the key time to do it, to get your seeds going. I sort of aim to plant like the last week of May or sometimes the third week of May. It can be hard to tell when. I'm not a farmer. I just do this as a hobby. But last year I had my garden started much earlier. I'm very behind this year. So we'll see if the weather cooperates. I'm not sure. I'm just doing one slice of bread today uh, because I'm gonna have like full plates. I just cut it in half between the two of us and I'm taking the bacon off early because we really like, we really like it crispy. Both of us do. Uh, so even though it's like cooked, uh, I'm gonna put it in the oven to get really crispy and just throw the mushrooms right in the oil that was left behind by the bacon. As well, I'm gonna throw in one of the little, uh, little parcels of turkey sausages that we set up the other day as well. Into the oven the bacon goes. We'll see on the other side, my friend. I didn't even originally plan for this, but once I was cooking the sausages, I was like, you know what would be great with this? Uh, it's totally like uh, diner food in my mind. Like this is good times on a Sunday morning. These baked beans. So we'll heat those up in the microwave. Throw the dressing on the salad, and I'm just gonna like pre-toss this without the tomatoes or anything. I find if you toss it with other stuff in it, everything sinks to the bottom. It's annoying. The uh, mushrooms and sausages just kind of stirred up here. Sausages tend to cook slower than mushrooms. I probably should have put those in first, but I wasn't thinking. I'm just going to start arranging stuff on the plate. The toast isn't actually ready, but I'm just trying to figure out where things are going to go exactly so that I can sort of map how much room I have for other stuff. There is this really so funny comment on my last video from a lovely viewer who basically said something like, uh, I'll try to find the comment, but they basically said, you can always tell which plate is going to be for a loved one and which plate is the person who is cooking it is going to be for them. I appreciate it because, yeah, I always try to make the, the plate that my wife is getting, like, the plate, like, the beautiful one. I don't really care how mine looks. This bacon is uh, very crispy. So I'm just going to set this aside on a paper towel, just so it's got that nice, nice crispy. And then I'm using the rest of the grease just giving this toast a little toss in it before putting
putting that back in the oven just so it gets really, really nice crispy on the outside onto the turkey sausage and mushrooms and throwing a little bit of uh, Worcestershire sauce. I always want to say Worcester because I saw that there's parts of America people pronounce it Worcester. And I'm also throwing a little bit of maple syrup on there too. The combination of these two condiments is amazing for breakfast foods. Please try it. You gotta keep an eye on it though because that syrup as it gets hot, it sort of like caramelizes and becomes sticky so it can leave like sugar basically baked onto your pan if you're not careful. Put the toast on here and now it's starting to come together. I didn't want to finish doing all the egg plating before I got the toast out, but now we can do it. These eggs are perfect. They're so jammy on the inside exactly the kind of texture I like. So we'll do one piece of bacon per person, a couple sausages, a whole smattering of mushrooms. Again, you can tell what plate is going to be mine. And then this last egg, I'm just going to cut it in half and split it between the both of us. So we get an egg and a half each. I'm trying to be somewhat delicate with my placement just because inside the yolk is kind of not runny, but it's um, precious, let's say. We'll throw those green onions on top as a little garnish, but green onions always go with ramen eggs, in my opinion. And I had a little bit of fresh thyme in the fridge still, so I'm just throwing that on top of the mushrooms. Mushrooms and thyme are like match made in heaven, basically, in any circumstance. The baked beans do not fit on the plate, so I'm just putting them in a little side bowl. These bowls have ice cream on them. I think they're for ice cream. That's fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, now breakfast delivery time. Luckily, not very far to walk, so Quite easy. And now I get to have my own breakfast. I have to tell you about this juice. It's so good. I've been drinking juice from this brand for many, many years, but the pear juice is the best one. I'm telling you. It's a little expensive, in my opinion anyway, so I kind of like parse it out little amounts at a time. It actually goes pretty good with the beans, I'm surprised. Alright, let's give it a try the sausage. Nice. Let's do the egg. of mushroom and bacon. Give the salad a go. Let's try bread and go. I'm going to put some mushrooms on it and also beans. Beans on toast is so good. This, uh, this 
might be a little bit messy, but I'll try. <laughs> Come on, look at that. That's just delicious. Very messy. Lately, I've been playing a lot of um, Pokemon Sleep. I started playing it in December, actually. It's really fun. It's simple. You're basically just like befriending Pokemon rather than catching them. And you get to cook little meals in it as well, which I also really like. You kind of collect little recipes and then you feed cute little meals to Snorlax. It's just a like cute mobile game. I like how unserious it is and like you don't need to be on it very much just like when you have a free minute in the day so that one I've had it I still play Pokemon Go but now I do both alright let's clean this up a little bit I'll finish this juice in a bit though I can sip on it while working on our next meal. Actually, I'm starting this early today because I think we're gonna have an early dinner. I want to try to get out before the weather gets too, too bad. And besides, this is kind of gonna be involved because I've been looking forward to making this for a couple of days. So, to start out, I'm gonna make a little side dish. I kind of have an idea in mind of this, but I'm also just winging it, taking a bunch of canned sweet corn, just giving it a good wash. And now I'm going to dry it off as best as I possibly can. I want as little water in this as possible because I'm going to actually roast it in the oven, like right under the broiler. I want it to be like kind of crispy, crunchy, so just giving it a really good squeeze with this uh, tea towel underneath too to get out any excess water. And then I'm going to put it right here in this bowl so we can put some nice oil on it as well. I'm just going to line this tray with a little aluminum foil here. And I don't usually use cooking spray. Normally, I would just use olive oil, but I'm gonna have this corn right under the broiler, so I need to be sure this is not gonna stick or, you know, burn right onto the foil, because then I would have no luck, like, peeling it off. It's just not gonna happen. So, a little olive oil as well, and I'm going to try to spread these cute little corns. Is it called a corn when they're off of the cob? Kernels? Yeah, kernels. Or is that only when they're dried? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're just gonna call them corns. I'm gonna spread them evenly, so right under the broiler. I'm trying to roast them so they're crunchy. I'm keeping an eye on this because it happens really fast. A little toss, so a more even roast. If you're wondering, this cannot make popcorn. Maybe that's a silly thing to say, but as I was thinking of doing this, I was like, can it make popcorn? Is that possible? No, I looked it up. It turns out the sweet corn like this on the cob, it's not even the same type of corn that they use for popcorn, and also popcorn has to be like so they can burst, but they won't pop in the same way. Anyway, popcorn tangent. I'm just throwing a bunch of stuff in here to make a dressing. I wanted to use a mix of sour cream and mayonnaise, but I didn't have that in the fridge. I thought I did, but I don't. So we're doing uh, mayonnaise, everything but the yellow day from Trader Joe's, red pepper flakes, uh, a bunch of stuff chili powder. I want this to be very spicy. And a little dried cilantro. It would be better. 
better to use fresh, but I used it all in the sauce a couple days ago, so here we are. And of course, a lot, a lot of the black pepper, of course, and lime juice and garlic powder too. We'll put in feta after we've mixed it exactly where it needs to be, but you know, Taste tests have determined we need more everything but the elote and more chili powder because I do want this to be a really kicky side dish. But let's go ahead and throw a lot of feta cheese in now. And we'll keep this out. I want to do like a little feta topping as well. love a latte in the summer. It's the best. It's one of my favorite things, but I can't get it where I live right now, so just doing like an ode to it, although it's, you know, my attempt at an ode to it. So hopefully it turns out good because I've never made this before. Fingers crossed. But it's got cheese and you can't go wrong. always 
just make it a habit to disinfect uh, surfaces in between like different uh, sections of meals or at least after cooking meals like totally got into the habit of doing this uh, a couple years ago of like disinfecting all surfaces and then it just stuck with me but I think it's a good habit to have especially when you're cooking with all sorts of different stuff you know Start on the next part. More garlic, of course. These little cubes are really handy. I highly recommend uh, making these. Uh, we did it in my last video together. And today we are cooking with my holy grail. Yellow mango. Yellow mango is my favorite fruit in the whole world. We are currently in mango season started, I think, in February, and I think they're in season until May. Just take my advice here. If nothing else, listen to me about this. Go to your store right now and take a look for yellow mangoes. This is the best time of year to get them, so if you've never tried one and you want to try it because it looks good, right now is the time. If you already know you love them because you're a genius, and you're smart and beautiful, which I know you are, uh, go, go to the store and get them right now. This one, I got a whole bunch when I was at the grocery store, but this one has, like, been with me the longest, so it has some spots on it that are, like, a little, mm, not great, but that's okay. We're just gonna cut those off. We're not gonna waste any precious mango. We're gonna use everything that we can. I'm just trying to cut into like sort of cube shapes so anything that's not looking perfect we can just get rid of that's okay there's still a lot of really good mango here that we can use and enjoy they smell so good you can make savory foods with mango you can make a lovely mango lassi for yourself which is a wonderful drink there's so much you can just eat it right in your hand like an apple. It's incredible. <laughs> I, I just love mango, so this time of year, it's like built into my brain. This is when I buy them. I get like four of them a week. <laughs> Alright, I need to wash this tomato and the jalapeno as well. But first I'm going to cut this onion. Got a cute little red onion here. It's pretty big. I don't really need the whole thing. So I'm just going to cut off this kind of like two inch part of it, you know, and I'm doing a very, very tiny little mincy today. I want it to be very small so it evenly disperses itself amongst all the other delicious food. And I'm going to use like um, a little less than half of this tomato because it's a big tomato. Cutting tomatoes actually makes me realize I need to sharpen my knives. You know, most things you can get away with. You're cutting an onion, it's fine, it's beautiful, you can't even tell. And then you gotta cut a tomato and it's humbling. It's a very humbling moment to cut a tomato with a slightly dull knife. So I really need it. I really need to sharpen. Please hold me to this. Hopefully by my next cooking vlog, I will have sharpened all my knives. I'm just gonna take the seeds out of this because for this particular recipe, I'm gonna kind of use it, well, I was gonna say I'll use it like as a topping, but I think I'm gonna mix some in too. We'll see. I really like spicy. I don't think I like things quite as spicy as my wife. She likes things extremely spicy, so this way I can kind of put even more in hers, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm just gonna put these in a cute little bowl, and let's take a look at our mixture over here. So the garlic is pretty much defrosted at the bottom. Together. Oh, the mango looks so bright and beautiful. I'll put some 
So I'm going to have to use this little tray on the side and make our extras on the tray. So I'm trying to evenly spread out all of these ingredients. I'm going to put one little scoop of the avocado onto each tortilla and kind of ration it out. I want them to be evenly dispersed. Probably again, I could have used another avocado, but I didn't have it, so fingers crossed that this can be stretched enough. A little bit of iceberg lettuce on top. I, I'm like anticipating that I'm going to get comments from you guys being like, actually, iceberg lettuce is the best lettuce. It's not, but I'm, I'm happy for you if you feel that way strong feelings about this that I didn't even know about. They're, they're new to me, these opinions. And I'm just putting three shrimps on each. Uh, just, um, I don't have quite so many, so we're gonna have to make it work here. This is probably my favorite part of cooking any meal, just like arranging things at the end. Satisfies something in my brain when it all comes together and I can just kind of delightfully sprinkle bits on top. That's the fantasy would be just this part of cooking all the time. But you kind of have to prepare everything first, obviously. It still is, though, my favorite part and very satisfying to do. Of course, I'm trying to make Nico's especially beautiful because I aim to impress at all times. We're putting extra spice on hers. I know she'll like that because she likes things very spicy. And of course, we gotta use this amazing sauce we made. Garlic, cilantro, lime. Let's go. Delicious. Okay, so obviously I, I included the Valentine's Day cookies, but they don't really go with this stuff. That's okay. Right. They look beautiful. Thank you. Can I pour you a drink? Oh, please. Yeah, I'll do it proper. Wow. Yeah, exactly. You can't have a head on this seltzer. <laughs> it's just not right. This is not a sauce. It's like, um, I almost just want you to try it. Instead of explaining it. Okay. But like you could so, either you could put it on like your actual taco or you could just eat it on the side. So kind of like a sauce. It's not a sauce. Okay. It looks it's delicious. Like a, it's like a side dish. Is it like it's corn and oh I'll figure it out. You want to just try it. Just try it. Everything is so beautiful. It smells so good. Thank you. I'll put it on the side and you can see if you like it. Yeah. I'm, I know I'll love it. What if you what if you don't? Okay, yeah, just see what you think. It's really yummy. You like it? It has a good kick to it. It's sort of like uh, an elote inspired side dish because it has, I like grilled mm -hmm. corn. It's exceptional. I mean, real elote is better, but I'll take what I can get for now. I'm excited to try this too. Oh, it's really good. Mm. It's really, really good. The mango is a really good choice. I love mango so much. This is incredible. <laughs> you did such a good job. Thank you. What? Suddenly I feel sheepish. Why? You did amazing work. I'm getting complimented. Mm. Thank you. But as I was cooking it, I was, I was like, this is weird. This is like Why the, is it weird? the opposite of seasonal because none of these fruits and vegetables are in season. But I just like craved something summery, I think. That's um, very nice. Thank you. I think this would be even better with like um, actual corn on the cob. Like if you grilled it and then cut it off, you know, it's kind of nice. Mm. Actually, getting to eat while the sun is still up. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
there is technically more also, but it wasn't, they weren't going to be like beautifully. beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> like there wasn't enough to make them beautiful. Completely aesthetic. Yeah. You know, I thought when I was um, doing so many garlics that I would have a lot, like I'd have for weeks, I've probably used like mm, a quarter of it already, if not more. We eat a lot of garlic. Mm. Would you like a cookie? It will have the little one. You it's very one? yeah, it's cute. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm gonna have a big one. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. I love crunchy sugar icing. You know, it's grown on me. I used to be like very anti icing. Why? And now I like icing, yeah. You didn't like icing? No, I didn't like icing for the longest time. This changes so much. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Can you shop your shop? Did you ever at your school have to make like boxes for Valentine's? Yeah, the little like the mailboxes. Mm -hmm. And you like could buy cookies like this mm -hmm. and they would be like in colored cellophane. Mm -hmm. And um a carnation or something. I wonder if kids still make those boxes. Do they I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Do kids still do Valentines? Mm. I'm not sure. In the comments, <laughs> let us know if kids still do Valentines. I can tell we're not parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta hurry and clean this stuff up because we are going to head to the store, which I'm very very. Today I didn't think it would. I need a bunch of stuff. I need these palette refill things. These are weird and amazing to me. But they're very useful. And I need to get my seeds, but um, I didn't really think about what exactly I wanted to get. I probably should have thought about this sooner. Definitely tomatoes. I know I have some seeds left over from last year. These ones look good. These little like Abe Lincoln ones. What a strange and cute name for a tomato. I'm sure there's like a really good reason they're called that, but I don't know what it is. Let's get these ones too. I really want to do a lot of herbs this year because I found that last year, even though I grew like zucchinis and stuff, actually needed the most was fresh herbs. So let's get basil, rosemary. I know I have some. I think I have thyme and sage already at home. So we'll get these for sure. These little seed pods I got today all fit in this plastic thing. I just had to dig this out. I haven't used it since last year. When I got this last year, it came with those little pellets already in it, but I still had it. I held on to it, so I can just replenish the little pod things inside. Basically, they're like little hockey pucks that are made of like dirt. There's more to it, but they expand when you fill the tray with water. Drives. I need drives. But yeah, last year I just I came with the pellets in here. So now I need to completely refill these. They remind me of like pogs. Does anybody remember pogs? I feel like pogs are little air hockey uh, pucks. They're cute though, but they get really big. They expand to like four times their size. It's kind of nice smelling them. I don't know if that's weird. They're just full of dirt, so they smell very earthy and nice. And I know once I fill this tree with water, the whole room is going to smell very, very earthy. The sun is starting to set, so I gotta. Get a move on here and get to 
setting this up just while the light is out. The new box didn't have instructions, but I kept the box from the old set, and it said to fill with ten and a half cups of warm water, and I just have this little, like, Pyrex uh, water measuring cup, so I'm just gonna do two cups at a time. These are so funny because you think, like, this is a lot of water they can't possibly absorb at all, but they do, they manage to do it. It's kind of amazing. I love how they look. They're very weird. This one's upside down. Let me just fix that. They have to be situated so the little hole is at the very top. year was my first year, like, planting an actual garden, and I was so, so hyped about it. I was trying to get all my friends on the, like, gardening thing with me. I was like, it's gonna be great. We'll all pick different vegetables, and then we can, like, trade the vegetables that we've grown. It's gonna be amazing. It's like I was selling it. I was trying to get everybody on board. I was like, this is a great idea. We want Come on. And I didn't really get anybody else on board. One of my friend's husbands did, though, so that's cool. So now he's my gardening buddy, in a way. But, uh, yeah, last year I bought this lamp. It's kind of weird looking, and I like it. It's a little bit dusty right now, because it's been a while since it's been used, but one of those items that I was like, you know what, I'm gonna invest in this thing because I plan on using it for a long time. So I'm happy because this is my second year using it and hopefully many, many years to come. It worked actually really well last year. So, I mean, it was a little, it was kind of, in my opinion, a little pricey, but I'm, I'm aiming that, like, kind of pays off if I can use it, like, for a really long time. So let's go ahead and get some of these seeds planted. They're so tiny, you have to be really careful because you can easily use them. Basically, I just, like, make a bigger hole in these little, um, little pellets. I mean, they're not pellets anymore, they're little, like, little balls of dirt. And then I stick seed in and kind of firmly but not too firmly close it shut. Like I want the dirt to surround the seed nicely but not be so tight that the seed can't break through, you know. They're very delicate at this stage of life, these little seeds. I have to tend to them and protect them and love them. I don't really have a little label, so I'm just going to make some. Just use like little sticky notes, but of course I need to use tape to kind of do like a, a faux laminate situation because these labels are going to be around water a lot, I'm anticipating. I mean, once you put the lid on this thing, it kind of becomes a little greenhouse, so I want to be able to read the labels as long as possible organizing them by rows. So, this first row will be tomatoes. I'll probably do a bunch of different kinds of tomatoes, and then I'll move on to the herbs. Now that they're all done, time kind of got away from me, and the show I was watching is interesting, so even though it's night, it's okay. The light is here. I'm gonna set this up in a warm spot. The seeds need warmth. My friend who also gardens, he uses a heating pad for the stage. I don't have that. Um, I used the lamp last year just to keep things not hot, but just a little warm and it worked great. So maybe one day, like maybe in a couple years, if I'm still, you know, plugging away at this, maybe then I'll get the heating pad for these guys. But for now, this works fine. 
I like this lamp because you can adjust the height. So it starts out quite close, and then as these little guys start growing, you can raise it higher and higher. It's really nice. And my own personal superstition when it comes to these is I leave my little my little dog totem to watch over them. Uh, kind of watches over me as I grow too, but right now these little seeds need it a little more than I do, so we'll keep that there for now, watching over. <laughs> My darlings, thank you so much for joining me for another ASMR vlog. I, I really like doing these, so if you'd like, I'll keep making them. I hope that you all have a wonderful evening. That I love you a lot.